Do you like cameras? Of course you do, because without them it would be pretty dull. We wouldn't have films, games, animations, not even a darn picture. But what sets apart an awesome picture or animation from a boring one? Before we dive into that, let's take a quick look at setting up cameras in Blender. If you are already familiar, feel free to skip this part. First off, when you start Blender, you've got a camera already. If you want to add another, just click Add in the drop-down menu. If dealing with multiple cameras, switch between them in the scene properties. Each camera has its settings in the camera properties. If your scene is a bit larger, adjust the clip end to a higher value. Same settings apply to your viewport. Press N, go to View and set the clip end for a clear project view. You can switch to your camera view with numpad 0 or go to View, Cameras and select Active Camera. Before we jump into different camera animations, we take a fast look to different aspect ratios. Choosing the right one depends on the platform and the intended visual effect. The first one, and also the classic one, is the 16 to 9 ratio. It's widely used for platforms like YouTube and TV shows. 4 to 3 is an order format, historically used for TV and early films, and it can be employed for a vintage effect or specific artistic purposes. 21 to 9 is the classic cinematic format for feature films. It offers an even wider view, emphasizing landscapes and action scenes. And lastly, we have the mobile formats for TikTok, Instagram or YouTube Shorts. It's 1 to 1 or 9 to 16. Now that we have covered the basics, let's explore various animation styles. The first one is the classic path animation. It simulates drones or dolly shots. Create a curve and position it for your desired result. Prioritize realistic movement to avoid an unnatural feel. Add a path follow constraint to your camera and reset the camera's position and rotation if needed. And if the camera behaves weird, adjust the axis settings. To change the speed of your animation, set keyframes for the offset value. Alternatively, parent the camera to an empty and add a path constraint to the empty for more control like a dolly arm. And there you go! Nothing simpler than setting up awesome drone shots and dolly movements in Blender. The second one is the fake cameraman. You can simulating a walking person with camera or phone in Blender. Select your camera, go to View, Navigation and right click to walk navigation to create a shortcut. Switch to Camera View, select Auto Keying which stores every camera change as keyframes, press space and then your shortcut. Now you can click G to enable gravity and V to jump if needed. Walk like in a video game and your movement is recorded. You can exit the walk navigation by clicking the white mouse button. For a specific camera height, lock the z-axis of your camera. In the graph editor, fill gaps with keyframes by clicking key, density and sampling keyframes. Smooth them out by also clicking key, smooth and gaussian. And adjust the intensity with your mouse cursor. You can also move and scale the keyframes to change speed and position on your timeline. And boom! You've got crazy fast animated third and first person movements like your own character controller. It's probably the easiest way to create realistic human camera works. Third one is the attached camera to an object. Position the camera, select the object to be parented, then your camera. Press Alt-P and choose Keep Transform. And that's it. If you want dash cams or body cams, this is the way to go. And the fourth one is freestyle. It's all about creativity. To create manual keyframes can be handy, but keep it simple. Starting with positioning the camera for main shots, like key poses in a character animation. Feel the motion you want to achieve when blending shots and use fewer keyframes for smooth animations. But avoid overcomplicated movements 
as it's easy to mess up smooth motion. Additionally, you can lock the camera to focus on a specific object, making it easier to control the movement. Select your camera, add the track 2 constraint and choose your target. If the direction doesn't match, adjust the axis. Animate the influence slider if you want your camera to track an object for a specific duration. And of course, you can combine different animation styles to create unique looks. Once your camera movement is set, we are not done yet. Check your focal length and sensor size to match a real camera. Longer focal lengths compress the background, while shorter focal lengths widen the field of view and depth perception. Sensor size determines the equivalence of focal length and impacts low light performance. Fine-tuning these settings allows you to mimic specific camera characteristics. Lastly, add camera shake. It's crucial for a sense of realism. Depending on your scene, you may need more or less, but you need it. Especially dynamic scenes benefit from this. There are two ways to create it in Blender, as far as I know. The simplest one is to use the free add-on called Camera Shakeify. To use it, select your camera, open the drop-down menu and press plus. Choose a preset and tweak the settings to fit your idea. You can blend multiple presets together, but don't overdo it. However, you don't have 100% control over it. That's why you can also create manual shake. Select your camera, open the graph editor and open object transformations. Select one, go to modifiers and add noise. Adjust the scale and strength for a natural shake. Copy the noise modifier if needed and paste it on the next location. But don't forget to change the offset to avoid generic movements. Enable restrict frame range to blend the camera shake to specific timestamps or between multiple ones. Keep in mind real camera movement to create realistic noise based camera shake and if you have additional points to consider please share them in the comments below. Now Enable Death of Field and select the object or scene that needs to be in focus. It gives your final render more dimension and directs attention to the right place. Motion Blur adds a great sense of speed and is crucial for achieving realism, especially in animations. In addition to these points before rendering, there are some to cover after the rendering process. To access post-processing in Blender, enable Use Notes in the Compositing tab. Press Shift A and search for a viewer node to see your final render. This also works for animations. Several nodes can be useful for different effects. Depending on your focal length and sensor size, you need lens distortion. It's necessary in many situations and can be set up right here. Use an eclipse mask to set up a vignette effect, adding even more focus to your scene. The exposure node helps faking outdoor exposure or regulate your animation for fade out or whatever effect you want to achieve. Of course, you can add various filters for different looks or simulate film grain, wet review or more. Color correction is also essential in this workspace. In conclusion, mastering the art of camera animation in Blender opens up a world of creative possibilities. So go ahead dive into the world of cinematic camera work and let your creativity unfold. But most importantly, don't forget to have fun. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.